today to uh, work on this camper. Uh, what happens when you plug a 30 amp, 110 volt AC camper into a 30 amp, 220 volt receptacle? Well, we're going to show you today. I get probably a half a dozen of these a year. People, you know, they'll tell an electrician, you know, hey, I need a 30 amp receptacle wired here. And the electrician automatically is going to think, uh, 30 amp receptacle, that's 220. You know, for a, it's a dryer plug. It's essentially a dryer plug. 30 amp plug on the end of the short board, uh, most travel trailers, is the exact same thing as a lot of your dryer plugs. So whether it's done by a professional electrician that just does not realize that, you know, that he's wiring, should be wiring their 10 volt, or whether it's done by the homeowner. Homeowner a lot of times do it because uh, the recept the paperwork with the receptacle, you go to Lowe's, you just buy a 30 amp receptacle, it's going to show you how to wire it to 20. A 110 volt camper does not like that. So we'll take you around here and show you what I'm talking about. Alright, here's what we're talking about. This has a detachable short cord, but this is the this is the end that plugs you know, in the receptacle. That looks just like a 30 amp dryer plug and receptacle. This tag right here tells you that this is a 110 to 125 volt AC, 60 hertz for America, 30 amps. That's what gets a lot of people. That's what got this guy here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to uh, diagnose this make the repairs. We're in here at the converter. Um, I mean, like I said a while ago, I see a half a dozen of these a year, probably, that where people plug these campers into 220. Um, 100% of the time it gets the converter. And sometimes um, it gets other appliances as well. Hopefully y'all be able to see that. I'm going to test this converter real quick. I'm going to put our meters on the AC scale. And we're going to follow the wire up out of the converter. And it is that one there. I've got the camper plugged in. We have AC voltage going into into the converter. Now let's flip our meter over DC scale, and see that should be the. We got nothing, no DC coming out of the converter, so our converter is bad. So uh, got one on the truck. We'll switch this one out, and then we'll go on and see what else is bad but we got to get the converter going first all righty this is a YFCO converter so we have our we have our new YFCO 8900 8900 series converter ready to go typically we would have to unhook the battery just because you know we wouldn't want to make any sparks here while we're changing stuff but this I haven't looked, this battery is either already disconnected or it's totally dead, so either way it really doesn't matter. This is the wire going down to the, this is DC power supply going down to the converter. This is the, this is the ground. This is going to the battery, I'm assuming. Um, we're going to push down on that little tab right here, which releases the, 
this board, get it out of the way so we can get these wires changed and pull our I loosened the wrong ground wire. That's okay. Yeah, I did. Some gorilla tighten that thing. Okay. So get, the, get those pulled through the little hole in the back, which you would clearly see if if you were doing this. Just gonna go ahead and cut all these breakers off. Alright, we just follow our wires about the converter, which is down here, and we see that here's our neutral. Get it unhooked. Might have to go get a square drive for that. No, I got it. And our ground comes up to here. Get those out of the way. And then our black one or our load goes up here and also almost always splits off and powers another circuit because the converter just doesn't take much power so they will piggyback another circuit on there here's where it goes to the breaker get that that loose work our wire out of the breaker and then get it get it down through the hole which will be really obvious if you're doing it already got the two screws out so the converter just slips right out so our new converter just slides right back in there. It's easier to go ahead and get the get the wires started up in these holes before before you slide it in. Try not to get them tangled up behind any other wires. With our DC, there's our AC. Put them up in there. And then you can slide this lower section back in there. There's a couple tabs back in there that slides slides under. There you go. It is in there. Go ahead and stick our screws back in here so that it's not sliding around on us while we're trying to trying to complete the uh, install. the DC wires up first. Oh, leaving DNA. <laughs> I always leave DNA everywhere I go. Somebody probably not going to be able to see it with my cheap camera, but 
somebody has really shorted this thing out. It's a big old, big old burnt spot on that that ground lug. Somebody had an oopsie. Just get them snugged up real good. We'll slide this, slide this board back in here. Put it under those tabs up top first, and then you should just hear it snap right in. There we go. Now we got that back where it belongs. We'll make sure tighten our wires up good without going crazy while we're in here we're going to check these other connections those should be good all right come over here on the AC side we're going to hook our ground up And our neutral. Tug on them a little, make sure they're good. They are good. Then our load or the black one goes back in the breaker or where the old one came out. Make sure that make sure that goes in the proper place. Sometimes it's a little hard to sometimes a little hard to hit that hole in them breakers. Once you tighten your screw up, if you tug on it and it don't move, then you know it was in the right place. All right, we're good. They even provide you with a new wire nut for that for that piggyback wire. I'm gonna put that back together. All right, I'll get the I'll get the meter set up here. I'll show you what happens when we turn it on. There's our meter. It is on DC scale. Alright, hopefully you can see that. We're going to start flipping breakers on. And this one should be to the converter. And yes, we have 13.7 if you can't see it. Volts DC, so the converter is now working. You probably heard the the air conditioner kick on because apparently they had it on. Um, it needed the air conditioner needed DC power to for the controls, so that's why it just came on all by itself. So uh, now we're going to go and see what else is bad. The customer already removed the microwave. It usually gets the microwave too. Um, we're going to check power on that circuit real quick. Just stuck a tester in there and it, it lit up. So that means that means that circuit's fine. We're going to double check that. We'll double check that microwave just to make sure it's bad. I mean, the microwave, the microwave and the converter almost 100% of the time. Uh, they have a TV in here. They said the TV worked. We're going to double check, make sure the the refrigerator um, 
AC heating element works and we already seen the air conditioner work so he's probably got off pretty lucky so a converter and a microwave um, I'm gonna check the uh, refrigerator um, I'll, I'll show you how to do that I was not going to but I'll, I'll show you how I, how I do that okay first thing we're gonna do is turn on auto okay it's got no power okie dokie that means it's got no DC power yep we have no light have no light inside so for some reason for some reason we don't have any DC power in the refrigerator so uh, that's probably just a bad fuse down here um, I don't I don't know if that didn't happen when he plugged it into 220 that's something that's happened since so, uh, we'll check that out real quick when you're uh, when you're testing this stuff up here um, whether you're wanting to check the AC side or the DC side you can use any ground here I'm gonna use the ground on the AC side just because it's much easier to get to uh, I don't know whether you see that meter or not it's really hard to tell, but I'm just going to go through and uh, check these fuses. We should have the converters putting out 13.6 right now. So if we should have 13.6 on every one of these DC wires over here. Alright. And we do. So, now we go to the back of the refrigerator and see why we're getting no DC power for the controls on the refrigerator. The back side of the refrigerator, basically all these vents look the same. If you see that vent, you pretty much know that is the back side of the refrigerator. Did I say refrigerator just now or did I say water? Refrigerator. Yeah, there's uh, practically no part of this that somebody ain't been into. So here's our power coming in to the board. We get my meter to check his power coming in. All right, we got our meter set on DC scale. Go right here. The power come right into the refrigerator. And we have power going into the refrigerator. So something, something has happened to this control board. Uh, there's a, there's a couple of fuses on this board, but I believe that they are both AC fuses. Yeah, neither one of those is DC. Um, so those fuses are good. So I would say. That this board is bad, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get a board for this refrigerator. So that's that's uncommon. I don't really think. Uh, I don't really think that had anything to do with plugging this camper into 220, because um, this is there's something wrong with the DC side of the board in this refrigerator. So uh, so that must have been an existing problem that they forgot to tell me about. Um, very seldom ever get the work story. At least the guy did fess up and say that he's the one that wired the receptacle wrong and plucked it into 220. So that's pretty uncommon for people to, to admit. But, hey man, I'm the one that messed it up. I know exactly what happened. But anyhow, um, so I'm gonna plug uh, I'm gonna plug the microwave into an outlet and verify that it doesn't work. It probably doesn't. Um, and uh, if that's the case, then uh, I'm going to have to get a board ordered, and we'll get him a, a uh, microwave ordered, and uh, we'll have him fixed up. I'm going to go inside and uh, plug that microwave in and just verify that it does not work. Uh, that's simple, just plugging it in an outlet, and if it's got a display, you know, 
Okay, I'll put it back in. It's probably going to work. I'm going to make sure it heats water. But, uh, no display. Microwaves, like a lot of other things nowadays, are uh, just throwaways. So if it doesn't work, you just throw it away, buy a new one, put a new one in, be done. I'm not going to take you inside to show you that. We're just going to plug it in, see if it has a um, display. I went in and verified the microwave does not have a display, so it is bad. So I'm going to get the microwave measured up and look him up a price on a new microwave. I'm going to talk to him about the refrigerator board. Um, I have to order that, and I'm not sure what he wants to do with that. So I am probably going to end this video here, and if I end up having to put a board in this, I'll probably just do a separate video on changing the board in your Dometic refrigerator, the main control board. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, please uh, subscribe. Um, you know, normal stuff. Give, give me a thumbs up. Give me a, a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Am I am I doing a really bad job? Am I doing a really good job? I mean, I don't know. There's nobody saying nothing. Is there anything else you'd like to see? I, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to get better at talking to this camera, which is tough for me. And um, so, just again. Thanks for watching.